Commercially important alcohols include methanol, ethanol, and isopropanol. So here's methanol, ethanol, and isopropanol, also known as 2-propanol. Ethanol is an important biological feedstock. We get it from fermentation of grain. Let's look at physical properties of alcohols. Their boiling points are high because of hydrogen bonding. Compare these three different compounds. All have two carbons, right? Ethane boils at the lowest temperature, negative 89 degrees Celsius. That's because all it has is London dispersion force. Chloroethane has dipole-dipole interactions because it's a polar molecule, but ethanol can do hydrogen bonding. Right, so it's the strength of hydrogen bonding, like so, that gives you a high boiling point. And then, of course, the other principle here is uh, solubility. And the idea with solubility is like dissolves like. In other words, compatible intermolecular forces make substances more likely to be soluble in each other. With alcohols, we say they have a hydrophobic region and a hydrophilic region. The hydrophobic region is the CHs, and the hydrophilic region is the um, portion that does hydrogen bonding. Right, so the hydrophobic region is ruled by LDF. The hydrophilic region is ruled by hydrogen bonding or any kind of charge separation, right? So that's also compatible with ions. And the solubility of an alcohol can be tuned just by choosing uh, the hydrophobic region. For instance, this alcohol just pictured down here would be more soluble in nonpolar solvents and the methanol pictured above would be more soluble in polar solvents. Alcohols are weak acids with a pKa around 16, more or less. If you have a strong base like the hydride ion, that's a hydrogen atom with an extra electron, it can do proton transfer and take the acidic proton of an alcohol. This is a reliable way to make sodium ethoxide. The ethoxide is the conjugate base of the alcohol. And then the hydride, once it's protonated, well, you've got hydrogen gas. Remember our old friend ARIO? Well, the A in ARIO stands for atom. So, um, this is the atom where you get negative charge once an acid is deprotonated. Carbon ions are the least stable, and uh, halogens are the most stable. And oxygen is uh, second most. This makes alcohols fairly acidic. So alcohols are pretty darn acidic. Thiols are more acidic, though because a sulfur anion is much more stable than, a hydrox than an alkoxide anion. Compare cyclohexanol with phenol. Cyclohexanol has a pKa of 18, which means it's 100 million times less acidic than phenol with a pKa of 10. Why is that? Well, Phenol has a lot of resonance structures when you de deprotonating phenol makes a benzylic anion 
and there are fully five resonance structures for that where the negative charge can be on the oxygen two different ways and on the ring three different ways. Trichloroethanol is almost 10,000 times more acidic than regular ethanol. Why is that? Well, the I in ARIO stands for induction. The presence of these electronegative atoms creates um, induction that pulls away electron density from the oxyanion, stabilizing that oxyanion. That means trichloroethanol is more likely to give up its proton than ethanol is. Then there are some effects that can't be explained by ARIO, but solvation effects, right? The sterics of t-butanol make it less accessible by water, so it's less stabilized due to solvation. And then the O in ARIO stands for orbital. However, O is never a factor when we're comparing two different alcohols because the oxygen atom in an alcohol is always sp3 hybridized. So we, we can ignore the O when we're comparing two alcohols. We can ignore the O in ARIO.